Bop, 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 to the top. By the way, your inhibitions. You'll be bop, 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 bop. Okay, okay. 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 Hello! And welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Cast, cast, cast. I am Spencer Cartier. And I am Spencer Cartier. No, 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 no. I'll let you have a lot of names. <laughs> I will not let you have that one. It's fine. And this here is Spencer Cartier. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wearing his Castrol GTX racing shirt, which immediately strikes me. I've been watching the show on Netflix. Tell me if you've heard of it. It's called Formula One uh, Race to Survive, Sur- Survive, I think. No. It's a Formula One show, and it follows the drivers and the teams. And it's so... I'm not one for racing. You know, NASCAR, f- don't care. Um, I don't even know other types of racing. Formula One, I've heard about it. It's like, who cares? This show is... I am... I'm captivated. It's a reality show. A reality show sounds too scripted. Like, okay. it's sort of like a docu-series, but cut up in a way that makes it really engaging and interesting and you just like see formula one from the other side it's but, done really well but like um but there are characters like you're following the drivers yeah so it's like if you met a guy named ken you're going to see ken in every episode maybe almost every episode he's always in the race it's a, it's like that's the cool thing about yeah. it you realize how small it is and okay. like the other cool thing, which I, I, I think they did a great job editing it. Let me tell you. Shout, shout, shout outs. To editor to editor. Editor to editor. Because when you watch it enough, you, like the, you obviously can't follow every driver every episode. So it like follows different plot points. But then you'll see, like, you'll in one episode, you'll see a random crash. And then this guy, and what, what it led to and stuff. Right. But then like three episodes later, you're like, Wait, I remember that crash, but you're seeing it now from another perspective. Oh, okay. It's 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 just done so well. It's in America. It's in every country. This show? Well, it's it's it follow, it's following Formula One, and it's like tournaments or maybe in Italy and or stuff. Grand Grand Prix. Grand Prix. And there's a like, there's real there's a Grand Prix in every country. Okay. Almost, not every country, in a, a lot of major countries, mm-hmm. and so. That's the other thing. When you think of Formula One, you might think of only your Grand Prix, right? Or uh, yeah, but. It shows how they're just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And they're all they care about is points. That's the other thing. I thought every race it was like all that mattered is if you Fastest. won. Fastest. People are, are going berserk for seventh place. Oh, it's okay. Like points in the grand scheme of. Right. Man, I, I could go on all day. Well, I mean, I learned, a, you know, I learned a little from cars. Like Pixar? Yeah. Cars? It had like the Italian and one, you know, <laughs> told me there was other countries involved. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and retired. So, if you don't care about racing, I still recommend the show to you. I, if you care about racing, you've probably already seen it. No, I'll check it out. Check it out. I love to learn about different worlds. Yeah, it's in it's a whole different world. Yeah. Um, it's and you see like all the politics, the money, because it's a rich sport. Right. There's no poor people driving. Well, there's a few, and that's you know that's like another little, part of the drama. Little underdog stories. Okay. But yeah, that's Formula One. I think it's called. F1 or Formula One race to survive on Netflix. But How many? Like, is there just one episode? No. So, I mean, one season. So the only reason I saw it is because the third season just came out. Oh, so they're okay. promoting it. But so it's nice for me. Oh, I love. Yeah, I love when there's yeah, a few episodes I'm you can watch. starting at the first season. Uh, yeah. So thank you, Frank, for reminding me. Thank Frank. I wonder if um if they ever attempted to cheat. What do you mean? The Formula One racers. Like how? I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, you see a lot of dirty driving and stuff. Really? And it's interesting because you like, you can't, obviously you can't get disqualified for crashing, but the small, like angry drive and you destroy both cars because these cars are made to go 200 miles an hour. Oh my gosh. But so like they break if two tires touch, it's like. So maybe you could um, team up with someone to take a better like you know in football don't they take out like you take him out and then i'll win you would think but that's the crazy job we you know what is this no this is a good episode. <laughs> we'll get to a topic i promise but 
the teammates a lot of times they hate each other oh because there's only teammates or competitors teammates every car brand so you know like mercedes Mm -hmm. ferrari um red bull that you can only have two drivers okay enlisted and they're always fighting for to stay have a spot okay and so there's all it's like there's always sort of this turmoil between the two of trying to outrace the other person and trying to be the number one the number one guy to your team and so sometimes it gets like ugly and, and there was one episode it was the uh indian car um and they they like were just crashing into each what? other nonstop. and yeah check it out check it out i will on netflix netflix if you don't have a username and password just hit me up <laughs> we'll put it <laughs> link down in bio yeah um so today enough about f1 well that's that's r- driving in a car not well, walking yeah we don't have a car we don't have an f1 mobile outside which means we have to walk we everywhere have to we walk go on this thursday walk through thursday roll the intro welcome back hope you're having fun cuz walk through wednesday just begun all right, guys, it is walk through Thursday, your favorite time of the week, maybe, my favorite time of the week, sometimes, and Frank's favorite, no, he's more of a Friday night, Saturday night kind of guy. Friday is for Frank. Yeah. Thirsty Thursday. We have some people who, who like particularly like Thursday. That's what they're looking for. Really? Yeah. For why? Um, they're just, oh, you mean for walk through Thursday? Walk or just, through Thursday. Oh, I thought you just meant like people are going to choose Thursday at any other day of the week? No, I don't think so. It's never been very popular, has it? I always liked Thursday. Like back really? in school, I always liked Thursdays. Because really? Fridays come with sort of a pressure of like, you're double faceted, right? Like you have, back in school, mm-hmm. you'd have school and then you have to go then do have plans. Wednesday, you're in the middle of the week. You've been in school for how whoever knows how long, yeah. two days. You have two more days before you. <laughs> Who knows how long? <laughs> M- Monday and Tuesday is too early in the week, <clears throat> but Thursday was always nice because, in a way, Friday felt like the weekend. So Thursday felt like a Friday if you're oh, counting all of Friday as a weekend. It's true. It's like after uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be relaxing. It's even. like it's like the two o'clock of, of the of the school day. Yeah, but it's the week. So like yeah. two o'clock. You know the teachers aren't gonna get like start getting. Yeah. It, we're getting out of three. You're not yeah. gonna really get into anything. So Thursday, you're like tomorrow's Friday. Like exactly. they're not gonna kill me tomorrow. Yeah, and, and you can rest easy knowing that. So you know what? I'm gonna say I love Thursdays. There, I said it. Thursday. Who was named? Th- um, you know, you said the other day about the planets and the and the Thor's, days. Thor's day. Thor. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was named after Thor. Monday was moon. The moon. I don't know them. That's why I asked Tuesday. you. Tuesday. I don't know. We don't, I don't know. know. But you should, right. you should have just left it at Thunder. Because yeah. Th- I always say Thunder for Thor. Well, that's Thor's Thunder. <clears throat> it's Walk Through Thursday, and we are going to get into a verse. But you know what? It's kind of like one word Wednesday. Okay. One word Monday. But funny one, enough, one word our graphic says one word Wednesday. Thursday. No. Did walk through i mean sorry <laughs> yeah no our I, graphic for today says walk through wednesday which we crossed out and put thursday, thursday but now we want to turn it into <laughs> one word wednesday thursday one one <laughs> one walk through whatever <laughs> no because originally we were trying to think of a name for we- thursday and we said walk through wednesday and we're like wait it's not wednesday i know oh. i was i was toying with it. how about walk through wednesday uh, oh my gosh I can't do anything. The the name you thought about for it? Yeah. You know, every single name, pl- play on the name for it's... the week is always about Wednesday. <laughs> we don't have any All TH right. sound of things, any F sound of things. Walk through Thursday. It has the TH. Yeah. Walk through Thursday. Walk through Thursday. So okay. <laughs> only the oldest fans will know what it meant. Yeah. But it's going to stay like WW. But today you are even throwing a, a wrench with a yeah. W. <clears throat> into it by saying it's sort of like a, a, a one word wednesday a one word walk through thursday yeah and yeah the, that's it one the, word walk through thursday the word is temptation temptation island temptation 
You know Temptation Island? Is that like a reality show? Yeah, it's one of those reality shows. Is it English? I feel like a lot of these reality... Oh, is it like uh, Love Love Island? Yeah, or maybe whatever? I'm thinking of Love Island. Temptation Island is a show, and it, I, I think it... I think you and... I think... Yeah, I don't think I watched that. I think I watched Love Island. Temptation Island, you and your partner go, and then I think they try to break you up and... For money? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so so it's temptation, guys. We're talking about temptation, but not just like I'm tempted to eat this bagel. We're talking about the dirty devil, the the dusty, dirty, right, demonic, right. Dumb. And I'm so mad at myself. Oh, oh, I'm so mad at myself right now because I printed out a paper and stuff <clears throat> with the temptation situation, mm-hmm. and I didn't print out the new line in the our father that changed the temptation line which is so important right now it's um wait lead us not into temptation has been changed to yeah no it doesn't change it from temptation it's it changes the the lead us okay and and it's like and well that's what i'm saying got got us away from temptation i wish i would let me you talk and i'll do okay so we're talking about the devil, guys. We're talking about the temptation when when you're you're having a spiritual attack and you don't even know it's a spiritual attack. You know, a wise man once said, "The what is it? The smartest thing the devil did was to convince you he's not real." All right. Let's go with that. The smartest thing the devil has done is convince you he's not real. And I'm here to tell you that a lot of times you're feeling things. You're feeling inner turmoil and you're saying things that you don't really that you shouldn't really be thinking that's not you that's the devil and that's how the devil works right if you're always putting on the armor of god i'm getting preachy today if you always put on the armor of god and you say we oh i watch the armor of god podcast i'm strapped up i'm suited and booted i have my sword where is he where is that dusty devil You'll be waiting. And you know where the devil is? He's behind enemy lines. He's up here. Mm. That's, how, that's how the devil gets you. He, he's never going to come out of, from under your bed. He's going to come out in your thoughts. Right. He, he's going to... All, all of these... What do they call it when you have a thought that comes in? Uh, an intrusive, intrusive. Intrusive thoughts. Unwanted. And part of putting on the, the armor of God, part of being spiritually ready to go at a moment's notice, to me is understanding that a lot of this is the devil if you believe in that yes because the quickest way the devil wins hear me now is by convincing you that some of these thoughts are yours you help him with his work you help him with his his work when 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 what's worse when the when a person tells you you're an idiot and you suck you can say well kick bricks son now, what happens when I look in the mirror and I say, what was it? What I say? You're an idiot and you suck. You're an idiot. And you, <laughs> I'm an idiot and I suck. I believe that. Now, what if the devil puts into your mind, I'm an idiot and I suck. Mm. And you're not, you're not realizing that someone doing it to you. Right. You're going to start to believe it. Right. But if you start treating it, when you, when you hear these intrusive thoughts right. of, of, of self or, or of being worthless and, yeah. and, and having all of these negative things, if you treat it as an outside attack. Yeah. You can defend yourself. You can't right. defend yourself from yourself. No. But when you when you come to realize that it's not you, yeah, that's when you can be strong and you can laugh in the face of the devil and say, "Ha ha! Throw whatever thoughts you want. They're not mine." Right. That's what I think. <clears throat> that's that's what you think, and that's what is true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. And you know, we always talk about being little children on Earth, and and what a little child learns when they are scared of monsters under the bed. It's not real. It's not real. It's mm-hmm. not real. And and that's what we have to do when we get yes. these thoughts. It's not real. It's not it's real. It's not real. It's it's a twist of reality. It's yeah. a twist of reality. You know, they always tell you if you're going to tell a lie, throw in yeah. some truth yeah. so that it can be more digestible. So it's a twist of reality, if anything. But lots mm-hmm. of times it's a flat out lie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found the <clears throat> I found the our father okay. situation and so we've always said, lead us not into temptation. Yes. 
the Pope has changed it and he wants us to say, do not let us fall into temptation. Do not let us fall into temptation. Into temptation's grasp. So the f- the original is begging the Lord, please don't, you know, begging the shepherd, please don't <laughs> lead us into danger. Yeah. So the Pope was like, that's not accurate. Yeah. Um, if anything, you would fall. I, you know, God didn't lead you there. Yeah. Because you're being led away from it, you know, like right, and that's what that's once again it, when we're saying this is this is a mental game. You are trying to be pulled to the love, love and acceptance of yourself and others, right? And it's not, oh, please don't make me hate myself. It's God's always there trying to be like all love, and and so it's do not fall, do not fall into that spiral where the dirty devil can get his claws into you. Right. So now. It's so that's that was my little one word Wednesday. Right. Now we're gonna talk about we're gonna walk through something real quick. We're gonna walk through something. It's not the Our Father. It's not the Our Father. Um, which would be fine if we did that one that day. That would be fine. But instead we're going to do That's probably this should have been the first one we did. The Our Father? Yeah. Yeah. That or is the, or the very last one we ever do. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm noticing. Um I always forget that it's a Bible verse. Yeah, I thought it was just a prayer. Like we, well, we said about prayers yesterday. Yeah, no, they asked him how do we how should we pray, and he told them. He was like like this. So that is a Bible verse. Um, okay, so instead we're going to do uh, Matthew. We're going to talk about Matthew because we're talking about temptation from the devil, and there was one person from the Bible that we know was tempted by the devil. Many, and, but we one in particular. The one in particular, and that was Jesus. Before Jesus went on to his mission ministry ministry he first went to the desert for 40 days and 40 nights or is that yeah and he was with angels but at one point he was tempted by the devil yeah and i'm gonna read it we're i don't know if we're gonna so much break this down word for word line for line that we usually do but we're gonna just talk about it okay okay then jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil After fasting 40, um, the tempter came to him and said, If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest points of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels. And then he just tells the verse. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put your Lord... Not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Yes. Woo! Now, there's a very tricky part in there that I think people miss. And I think the missing, the part that people miss is... When the devil, when um, Jesus, when so the second temptation. Now there's a there's a um, debate on the order. Yeah. The, of um. Because I saw in what was it Luke or was or Luke was the other Matthew, guy. Or, Mark yeah. Mark was so short. Okay, so Luke. Yeah. I was wondering. I'm like, wait, this doesn't have this, and I'm like, oh no, it's way up there. Luke has it in a different order of the temptations, and like that's when you get really precise and something something some think that had something to do with like the temptations of the garden of eden that he did it in that order but whatever but this order when it says that jesus answers the devil and he says for it is written that's telling you that the devil um jesus is using scripture yeah to answer the devil but did you know that the devil used scripture against Jesus in this. Yes, yeah, uh, that was what I skipped over. Yeah. That was when... Um, so that's really interesting. When Can he you told, imagine? Yeah. When, when he told him at the top of the temple to throw himself off the temple, he said, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone, which is scripture. From, right. Yeah, I have it. Is oh, no, From but, Psalm 91. So, right. Okay. Yeah. And in, in, um, he, I think he also tells them in, with the with the... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Do, delete. Um, so that is we, kind of scary to say that the devil would use scripture against you. 
no. to convince you to do because so- it's like what now hear me out guys okay i'm gonna give my opinions on this podcast because this is an opinion podcast yes and we're all named Spencer Cardiae. So and today we're all named Spencer Cardiae. You can blame, you can blame it on everybody. <laughs> when, when a tabloid comes out, yeah. Spencer Cardiae said this. Yeah. You're taking the fall, Spencer. Spencer. Guys, earlier in the podcast, I talked to you about how the devil comes to us in our daily, daily lives. He doesn't come at us face to face. He invades our mind. Right. And that's the devil's playground is an idle mind. So I ask you to not believe this, but just to think about this. Okay. We see in artwork, we see in movies, we see in depictions, Jesus come face to face with the devil. Right. And the devil tempts him. Right. Now, is that accurately how it went? went? Or did did the devil invade Jesus' mind the same way he invades the minds of all of us? Right. By having you think something. Right. So if you look at any of these things, and I'm glad you brought that up of he's bringing up scripture. Yeah. Because if he's in the mind, Jesus might be thinking he's telling himself. Right. And, um, What part was that? I don't think it might have been the middle one. Yeah. So so Jesus is at the top of the cliff. And you ever get an intrusive thought? With, <laughs> let's hope this isn't just me. <laughs> when you're at the top of the cliff and it's like, I should just jump. Yeah. And then No, it's terrible. When you're holding a baby sometimes and like again, I hope this isn't just me. No, I've heard it wasn't. <laughs> I've heard it wasn't. You're literally like like what if I just dropped it? Yeah. You know, like, and and then you squeeze hold you squeeze harder cuz you're like what a thought. So yeah, so let's let's talk about this one in particular. Okay. So Jesus is at the top of a cliff and he's trying to get his spiritual, you know, mind right. Yeah. And he has this intrusive thought that comes it's not a, a devil looking at him directly no he gets this intrusive thought and he's like i should just jump right and then scripture backing it up it's um because he's obviously well versed in in the bible right and he's like well if i'm the messiah then this will happen and what does jesus do he answers back so if with it, it, it with with scripture so if it is a thought then was it called he distinguishes this is the devil right this isn't me right this is the devil invading right. my thoughts right and to me that is more powerful thinking about it that's that a way. great lesson thinking about it as the way the devil invades all of our lives through our mind through our intrusive thoughts it's more powerful his um going against or, or his not being tempted his, right. his saying get away from me devil because hear me now there's a lot of people who i uh, feel like a lot of good christians the devil can come up to me and he can offer me anything right and i'm pretty confident i'm like i'm looking at you i'm the you're the devil right oh, i'll give you the whole world i'll be like no he's like oh give me your soul and, and i'll do this no i could say no to the devil 20 times over right but when the devil's in your mind right and you think you're the one saying it. Right. That's the true battle that when you win. So when Jesus fights the devil in my mind in that way. Right. That is such more of a strength of it is. fighting the devil, fighting temptation. It is. Than an actual gnarled, horned being. It really is. And and um, another thing that it supports is what we talked. You can have this one now. Um, that we What we talked about. People going by the word, by the letter, yeah. by doesn't say that you're supposed to do that. We talked about it with like spare the rod and spoil mm-hmm. the child. And we were like, well, we interpret that differently, blah, blah, blah. But Jesus himself. So I'm very comforted by the word and I should be. Mm. It's, God says in it, yeah. the, the power of the word is is medicine. The power of the word is, is weaponry. Yeah. You know, just the word of God saying the words of the Bible, whether you understand them or, you know, is so, so powerful. But... P.S. <laughs> there's a P.S. There's an asterisk. Be careful because the devil used the word of God yeah. against Jesus. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, you know, folded his arms and said, but that's what scripture says. Yeah. And so the message here, there's so many messages in this nice little, um, this nice little chapter. But I think a message that people miss in this chapter is... 
investigate even the word of God. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I think I do know that there are pastors who use words of God against to, to control people or to, you know. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and that's when Jesus answered him and said, do not put your Lord, the Lord, your God to the test. He also said, do not put God to the test. Right. So he had a rebuttal, but while you were talking and I was listening. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you can do two things at one time. I can, I can walk and chew bubble you gum. You are get so There's advanced. There's no stopping me. <laughs> to go with my idea, if I haven't already convinced you enough that the devil in this was not a literal devil, but yet the way the devil gets us is through our, our thoughts, through our, our own thoughts, or right. at least what we think is our own thoughts. In the first verse here, it's after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So after fasting 40 days and 40, 40 nights, Jesus was humpty. Right. Humpty. <laughs> <laughs> humpty dumpty. <laughs> then the tempter came and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. That That is like the the fact that, you know, he's there 40 days hungry. Right. That's when, you know, when, when you're at your lowest, that's when, that's when you have this right. mind that can be infiltrated by the devil. And it's right. like. So once again, you can think of that as, as a scary devil that's like, why don't you turn the rocks to bread? But now right. picture it like the uh, God on earth. So in a human form, who so which means subject to all things we go through, right. is sitting there starving. And then he sees rocks and suddenly this intrusive thought comes in. It's like, I should just turn those rocks into bread that I could eat. Right. And then it's like. And he answered, and then he remembers because he's he's got the armor of God on right. for sure. And he's like, "Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God." So he's like, "That's part of being geared up." Right. When we talk about put on your your armor of God, it's to fight that. You're right. Not, you're not fighting um, demons coming from the sky. It's those kinds of things, those intrusive thoughts when you're at your lowest. Right. That we're, we're talking about when we're yeah. fighting the devil. And, and um, you know, I did not know that this happened before he even picked disciples. Yeah, this is what, like, showed him he was ready. I didn't know that. Um, and it makes it all the more interesting, I think. Because if he's having these thoughts as a man, yeah. um, I don't have to do this. Or don't, I don't mm-hmm. have to starve and I can fly and angels will attend to me. You know, before he ever set out. So that was really a testing ground. You know, you're yeah. saying this show, the Formula One show, right? Yeah. I'm guessing you don't just to get to go out and get in the car and they let you drive around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to prove yeah. that you are not going to kill yourself, not going to kill somebody else, that you can handle pressure, mm-hmm. that you can, you know, everything. And, and all, everything, I'm sure. Also, they don't want you to be like some kind of crazy weirdo that will ruin the name of... <laughs> You know, yeah. Formula uh, One. So this was before anything's happened yet. Yeah. And he could sneak away and be like, I'm not up to this. Yeah. And this is way worse than I thought it was going to be. Exactly. And that's like, why don't you really see the devil come up? Like, Yeah. It's because like, why wasn't why wasn't he? A constant he, tra- he, following. On the boat. Like, ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's because it was like, I, I think it's. I need to make sure I'm mentally strong because right. once again, that is where you will be infiltrated. Right. And when you, once you can beat the devil there, you're good. You're Gucci. Yes. And, and that's I think that's what the true test was. It really was a true test. And you know what? I never thought of that until you just said it this second. The devil is not appearing all throughout his his walkings and mm-hmm. his talkings and his and his um swimmings. Did Jesus swim? <laughs> he walked on water. He walked on water. Because Jesus made it very clear here. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can say. There's, this is about temptation. We didn't use the word temptation very much during this podcast. But it meant well, to, it wasn't really one word of the day. It was, oh, that's it, it right. was this verse. That's right. It's walk through Thursday. There's nothing you can, can, can do nowadays when people say, um, how much for how much for your Formula One car? And you yeah. go, I would never sell it. Yeah. You know, it won, but go, everyone has a price. Yeah. Everyone has a price. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, if you gave me the whole planet, and you know, of course you can't get. <laughs> I don't know, but this he, Jesus must have made it so clear. Yeah. To him, there's nothing you can scare me with. Mm-hmm. 
tempt me with, offer me with. You can't use my own words against me to make me doubt. Yeah. Because for the devil to use the scripture against him, imagine the little bit of fear that would have come into a regular person yeah. of, Hi, what am I? Th- yeah. Which one's right? So he must have made it so clear. And even like you're saying he made it clear so the devil never showed back up. I think more than that is what it's showing is he showed that he'll never crack to any temptation. Mm-hmm. So go, he's like, now I can go out if I'm getting nailed to a cross. And then, um, you know, I was like, oh, why don't you just strike him down with lightning? He knows he'll say no. Right. He'll know. He'll say, it's not my job to right. test God. And and so even if things did come up, it doesn't matter. He's already proved that he's not going to right. let these intrusive thoughts, the devil sneak right. into your mind. And, you know, we him. just passed Easter. So it's a little strange that we're going backwards now to the no. beginning. Or we're going forward. <laughs> yeah, we, we <laughs> zoomed past his birth and everything. But who cares? Uh, Bible reading doesn't have to go with, you know, dates. Um, but what you just said, it proves that he won't crack. And all the way to on the cross, hanging on the cross where he could have gotten down. Mm -hmm. He could have gone up. He could have disappeared. He didn't crack. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know our time is up, but I just wanted to say the last part. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. I think that goes to your um, proclamation about patience. Yes. Because it was 40 days, like we weren't sure if he was already fasting for 40 days and then these other things happened or whatever it was. We're talking over a month yeah. of torture. <laughs> um, but what happened? The patience, mm-hmm. the refusal to give in, uh, the angels came and attended him at the end, yeah. I feel was. Yeah, patience. And, and, and also, I mean, just the idea that of, of if, if you're going to, use the idea of your mind is if you if you have these bad thoughts it's like when they say the uh, an idle mind's the devil's playground you mm-hmm. know when you get that out and so like, it doesn't matter what you say right. what's then filled is is good thoughts right. and positive thinking right right they're there um and they are ready to be invited in yeah. but we have a tendency to entertain the fear more than yeah. the peace because you think it's something you need to address, mm-hmm. but um, that just refuse it. Just refuse it. Refuse temptation. And just, even if you don't subscribe to anything we just said, there's something freeing when you externalize internal yes. struggle, because once again, it's easy to fight someone who wants to a- attack you. It's hard when that person is you. Right. And so just on a on a, a mental playing field, if you're going through things internally, treat it as an external situation. And it's like, whoa, someone's attacking me. Right. Don't think of it like I'm attacking myself. Say someone's attacking me. How do I stop that person? Right. How do I stop that mis- misfiring? That right. Bad wiring. It's all, it's just work. work no, that, that is a great tactic. It's a great coping strategy and it's a great way to regain your strength yes because you refuse to believe that you would call yourself terrible things or that you would refuse to believe that um you know and people in real life do that try to use scripture against to fight your thoughts on scripture yeah but you know what's right because you are god's child and you recognize him yes but that's walk through Thursday. We walked. We talked. We walked. We we did a little one wording. We did a little walking. <laughs> but, Driving. Yeah, a little, a little formula <laughs> oneing. But yeah. Um. So let us know what you think about this, because this is a it's a hot take. This is my thought on on this verse. Um. You can check this verse out. You can check out John or Luke. Luke has a very similar verse. Um. Yeah. But check out the Our Father. Where Check like, out the Our we Father. said Jesus instructed us to say it, and in it, it does say, you know, hope that you don't fall into temptation. Yes. Check out all that stuff. We'll be back tomorrow for fill in the blank Friday. But until then, go out and fight temptation. Dukes up. Ba ba. Peace. Huh.